I'm here at Scientific Sessions 2018 with Freddie Damon from Dr. Craig Gurgeon's lab at Purdue, and we just saw a really exciting uh, presentation about 40 cardiac strain and what that can provide for the future of mouse research. Maybe you can give us a little information of, uh, about what you just presented. Yeah, I'd be happy to. All right, thanks, Christina. So. Uh, as we can tell with this 4D technology, we really have this beautiful representation of the beating mouse heart. And while this is very visually striking, what we want to be able to do is quantitate this kinematic motion and move past a lot of the measures that we're typically able to acquire with conventional ultrasound. So what you can see with some of the work that's going on in our lab is being able to take this 4D data and really identify the overall motion and propagation of the contraction patterns uh, regardless of what is happening globally. So as it rotates through, you can see this large sort of contraction that starts at the base of the heart, moves down to the apex, and it doesn't go down sort of one sort of slice of the heart, but really wraps around. And this is something that we really are only able to see and quantify using 4D technology. Now if we move a little bit past this and uh, now just extracting that overall motion of the heart and start looking at uh, the strain within the heart, which is a, a very valuable metric, especially when we look at uh, the clinical applications. We can see differences even between, at the same age, differences between our controlled mice and ones that have this uh, level of myocardial hypertrophy. Now the reason that this is important is because while the actual growth and, and uh, uh, hypertrophy within the myocardium is a, is a hallmark of some of these uh, disease models, what you're really trying to do is, regardless of that hallmark, we want to see how the contraction of the heart changes. And so this opens up different capabilities for phenotyping the mice that's studied, not just with hypertrophy, but in any array of uh, different mouse models. And so what we can look at uh, is using some very sophisticated techniques in, co in conjunction with some of the, the results that I just showed you. We can look at myocardial strain using green Lagrangian uh, conventions and be able to piece apart with, our, uh, with a myocardial infarction model, we can identify regions that are actually uh, non-kinematic anymore. And so when we're trying to identify things like infarct size, well, you know, it, it's very common to use histology to identify the extent or use late, gineal, late gadolinium enhancement MRI to look at the extent of an infarct. But now, using this 4D technology, we're able to do the same thing faster with higher resolution uh, and be able to do this rapidly in vivo for uh, researchers that study this very large disease. So if we sort of look at the directions of the, the technology that we're trying to take it. We want to move past this uh, fact that a lot of conventional ultrasound uses very idealized geometries of the left ventricle. While it's useful to, you know, in the clinic to sort of assess and categorize your patients, when we're studying these models in, uh, in small animals, we want to be able to really acquire much more than that. And that's what this 4D technology and the work that we're uh, doing at Purdue University uh, allows us to, to do is, is to move beyond and sort of elevate this level of information that can be provided by ultrasound. And so we hope to, to work further with Visual Sonics and uh, develop this into a tool that is widely accessible by researchers uh, not only within the U.S. but internationally.